by telling you a couple, just a couple things about me. You know, I came to California, came to the Bay Area about 14 years ago, and I, um, my whole life I was a social justice activist, you know, working um, in the civil rights movement, for the women's movement, in the anti-war movement, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't aware of the environmental movement. I mean, I was tapping into it lightly, but I came to California, came to the Bay Area, and um, became involved in the environmental movement, moved into Richmond, and um, became involved in the environmental justice movement. And uh, it, it's just really, you know, the uh, rounding of my kind of consciousness and my uh, activism. And so that's kind of how I started out in terms of um, moving into the Bay Area, moving into Richmond, and uh, joining with the community that was already fighting against the second largest um, oil refinery in the state of California, the Richmond Chevron Refinery. And uh, it was a easy, easy fit for me to really, you know, just dive into that work. And eventually, when I was asked to uh, run for city council and then mayor, I, I, you know, decided I would do it. And, you know, the, the whole effort has been quite a, a, a battle, but, but just with many, many successes, um, you know, defeating Chevron's money, the $2 million that they tried in this last campaign to um, defeat all the progressive candidates. All the candidates that Chevron supported were defeated. And, and, and we now have a progressive majority on the Richmond City Council. So we're, we're really, you know, we're really uh, in, in a good stead for making those necessary changes. And we may, we've had so many accomplishments already. Um, we do have a, a really a model green job training program um, that includes solar installation, it includes weatherization, hazmat training, energy audits. Um, it's uh, gotten all kinds of awards. We've even been written up in a German newspaper. So it's, uh, it's something that we're very proud of. Many, many of our young people have graduated. And it's transforming lives because it's, Oftentimes, young people that have been involved, have had challenging backgrounds, some involved with, with crime, and they're turning their lives around thanks to this program. They get their GED, they get their um, high, school, high school diploma, that's all part of the program. They, they learn how to install you know, solar panels, they learn environmental literacy, and they're you know, placed on jobs. So we're, um, we're very, very proud of that. But we've also gotten many, um, many other ordinances in place, for instance, a, a foodware ordinance. So now 350 uh, plus of our um, food providers now have, cannot use plastic or styrofoam. So we, uh, we're very proud of that. And that, that took some working with the businesses, but they understand now that this is, this is in the uh, benefit of the environment. Um, plus, we have a residential food scrap collection and composting, and we have free composting giveaways. We have an environmental preferable purchasing policy, and we are one of the first cities to have an energy and climate change element in our general plan, which will soon be brought forward for approval to the city council. So we've got so so many of these positive things going on. We have community building that includes uh, climate action work. Parties. We are working on our on our climate action plan. Um, we have bike um, a citywide bike plan uh, with uh, um, bike trails. Uh, we have a greenway down the middle of the city that's uh, pedestrian and bike trail, um, where we have wonderful wonderful events, community gardens coming up, th uh, prop it, popping up throughout the city. And we have uh, to speak to the issues specifically of the energy efficiency that this this uh, conference is about. We have many energy efficiency programs. Um, we have um, a special low income program that is allowing, that is creating incentives for low income homeowners to put solar on their rooftops. And, uh, you know, we're in the process of developing this. Um, so we're going out to the community and asking, you know, what kind of a rebate seems like uh, a worthwhile amount. So we, work, we, we really work with the community. So when we talk about making community power happen, it brings two things to mind for me. Yes, it brings to mind renewable power. But community power, of course, is also community empowerment. So in Richmond, we work very closely with that to really uh, show that it's, it's so important to raise up the community and facilitate that empowerment. 
Um, so one of the reasons we've achieved the successes that we have is because there is this reciprocity relationship between the community um, and myself and the other progressives on the city council. Um, therefore, we have a community that's engaged, empowered, and we have the votes on the city council to implement the will and the desire of the, of the people. And so um, we have um, energy audits. We're working with Rising Sun so that energy audits are going on throughout the city. And every project that we um, put forward we utilize our graduates from our green job training program. So Rising Sun is a partner in the green job training program. We have a summer work um, program where the young people go out and um, uh, work with uh, homeowners and uh, you know earn a, earn a uh, paycheck that way. Um, we have a program that we're utilizing. For, we have foreclosed homes in Richmond as you know, the foreclosure crisis has hit all, all over. So we use stimulus money to buy the homes and um, then we're renovating them with our Richmond Builds Green Job Training graduates in a sustainable way, including putting solar panels on. So we're really, um, you know, raising the issue of sustainability and raising lives um, as well. Um, we have some new, some new ideas that we're working on that I wanted to share with you. Um, one of them, we are very, very interested in uh, community choice aggregation. <coughs> Um, we've been trying to move this forward for myself and another council member for a, a couple of years now, but we didn't have the votes. We have the votes now with the new city council. <laughs> so so we, um, just, we just recently had a um, presentation at a finance committee meeting from Charles McLashen um, from Marin County. And so um, where that's at now is Marin staff and Richmond staff are going to be working on the, the numbers and figuring out um, what it would take and what it would look like for Richmond to join the uh, Marin um, CCA, Marin Energy um, um, Program. Yeah. So, um, so I'm very excited. So once the, our staff does some work, they're going to bring it to the city council for another study session. And um, the more I learn about CCA, the more I realize how profound of a change this will make, you know, in terms of uh, reducing our carbon footprint and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And so we're very excited about that. We're also excited about uh, we're going to be solarizing all our city buildings with um, uh, PPA with a power uh, purchasing agreement. So the RFP for that is going out, and of course they will be installed by our Richmond uh, workers. So again, um, we're we're utilizing that um, effort that helps build our community. So, um, but the other thing we're doing is we're promoting this idea of worker-owned cooperatives. And I don't know if anybody has heard about. Um, um, in, in Cleveland, there's a, um, an effort um, called that, well, it's implemented already, called the Evergreen Cooperative um, Corporation, I believe. And um, it's, a ser it's a group of co-ops um, that are working on, in, um, on sustainable projects, you know, whether it's a sustainable laundry. And they have a lot of uh, big institutions, so these co-ops get the business, like from the hospital and the university. And, and so they... Uh, they get a lot of business, and they're they're really um, being very successful. So we're we're working at creating a solar installation worker-owned cooperative in Richmond. So we figure once these young people go through the program um, and they're graduated, um, we want them to also become owners of of their own company, and they have that democracy um, in the workplace as well as the community, you know, um, input in um, in policy making and civic. Um, efforts that we um, put forward in the city. So um, overall, we're, we're working just extremely hard to, to show what a city can do, um, an urban community you know, can do to transform itself from a history of heavy industry to a future of green industry. And uh, we know that the 20th century was the, uh, the century of greed. We think the 21st century is the century of need, and we're going to meet those needs. And uh, the way we're going to do it is, is by really shifting to clean energy and uh, you know, shifting to all the environmental necessities that our planet needs and that the people who live on the planet need to survive. And I want to end with a quote. Um, this is a quote by 
uh, Mohan, Mohandas, I think I'm reading this right, K. Gandhi, not Mohammed Gandhi, but I don't know if it's a relation or not. But the quote goes, there is a sufficiency in the world for human's need, but not for human greed. And I think that's something that we, ha we know so well in Richmond, that the greed of the 20th century has brought us a lot of pain. Previous city councils had let greed rule. This city council will not. And thanks with all of you to be a part of this.